Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of the Get Hook Podcast. Your friends here, Yvonne and Dennis. It is National Safety Month. It is June. Hey, guys. Yeah, like Dennis said, it is National Safety Month. You know, back in 1913, National Safety Council created uh, National Safety Month to spread the awareness. And really, the council was created to eliminate preventable deaths in the workplace. You know, we all know that it's been estimated that a tow operator is killed in line of duty every six days. The CDC calls this one of the most deadly professions in the United States of America. This is something that we know. This is this is the report. The CDC puts this information out. The International Tow Recovery Hall of Fame Museum puts this stuff out. And we really need to affect change. Today, we are also going to be speaking with Melissa Gaglione from Safety For Her. She's the founder of Safety For Her. And Alex Chopin, who's the owner of ASAP Towing and Recovery out in Vancouver, Washington, who is actually one of our valued honk partners. Can't um, wait to get started there. Yes. I mean, we're we're going to be talking about things like what can, what can operators do to make themselves safer. We're going to be talking about what equipment they need. We're going to be talking about high-vis gear. We're going to be talking about cleaning procedures during the COVID crisis. We're, we're going to cover it all today. We're going to get really in-depth. And Yvonne oh, is... Safety. Yeah. And then you were, we might even have uh, Yvonne get her car towed live on the air again. Lies. Don't listen to us. <laughs> we're not doing that, Dennis. <laughs> We, right. You know we, what? You and my Jeep, we're going to have it out over this Jeep, man. I tell you, uh, before we get into the show, guys, you know, one of my favorite topics is I love to hear Dennis's war stories um, and just the experiences that he's had on the road. So what is today's story, Dennis? Lay it on us. We want to know. Well, today's story is that most of you know, I am a second generation tow operator. My dad started towing in late 60s, early 70s. Uh, he's been doing this a long time. I, I've been doing this a long time. I've been around. And one of the scariest moments I ever had was when uh, dad and I were working for the same company and he he was loading up a vehicle on the side of a, an expressway, on a busy expressway, and oh had his gear on, had his lights on, every, doing everything he was supposed to be doing. And while he was loading the car, uh, an out of control car came up and hit the side of the truck. Thankfully, he was able to react and, and get out of the way and get to safety. But just, just hearing that call come over the radio that, you know, my dad's truck was hit. That's a scary experience. And just trying to get to the scene and having that fear, it's just, it's, it's such a, a terrible experience. And we know that this happens on, on estimate every six days, someone gets a call that their loved one isn't coming home because they got struck and killed on the side of a freeway or on the side of the road and, and was killed in the line of duty. And the message that we want to get out there is that this needs to stop. These are preventable deaths. There, there are safety initiatives that companies can take, that motorists can take, that we ourselves can take while out on the road just to make sure everybody goes home. Oh man, that is just so scary. I mean, you know, usually I love to hear these stories, but this one just, it really hits a lot closer to home, obviously, since it's your dad. Whatever happened? There was a move over law on the books at the time. This was uh, in the great state of New York. Unfortunately, at, at the time, the way the law was written was that an officer had to be there to witness the violation in order for it to be a ticketable offense. Oh my gosh. So the truck wound up being totaled. Thankfully, dad was okay. He was safe. But it wound up being an insurance claim and there were, there were no civil penalties, there were no fines, there were no criminal charges or anything like that because under the law, an officer wasn't there to see it, so it didn't happen. Oh, I hate to hear that, I hate to hear that. And you know, I, I'm sure, I mean, we've come such a long way with that being the case. And so what I wanna get into today is what can we do to eliminate that on our side so that way we don't have to you know, have situations that allow for these drivers who are unaware of, of the dangers that they're posing to operators and how we can eliminate that. So definitely want to get into that. It's really about awareness and it's really about being alert, being an alert driver, being an alert operator when you're out there on the side of the road, listening, using, using your, your eyes, your ears, using all your safety equipment to make sure that you're seen, but also make sure that you see what's going on. Don't ever turn your back to traffic if you don't have to. One thing that I've been hearing about and I want to know more about is um, the idea of service providers, operators, 
towing the vehicle to taking taking the situation to a, a much safer location. So getting out of the dangerous area and moving it to a safer location, possibly towing the vehicle off the road before they actually do the work. What's your thought on that? Yeah, I, I think personally and professionally, we do need to make sure we are clearing the roadway quickly and getting people to safety. Don't change a tire in the right lane of traffic. Don't deliver fuel on the shoulder if your back is to traffic. Get that vehicle out of the road. Do an emergency move so get it to a safe location. Get it off the next exit. And honestly, if you're if you're out there and you're really in a dangerous predicament, call the local authorities. Let them come and back you up. Let them send out a, a sheriff or, or a deputy or or a police officer or a tr state trooper to come out there and, and block traffic for you. Let them Yeah. We're, we're, we're together, guys. You know, I, I remember Alex mentioning how whether he knows the other company or not, or he sees another operator on the road, he, he goes out to support and blocks the traffic for them until they can finish up. And I think that's such a huge, a huge notion that we should be supporting one another. Fundamentally, I love that idea of, of backing up your brother and, and, and running, sister. running a block and sister. I know you keep getting me on that. You're going to, you'll, you'll. <laughs> I'll figure it out one of these days. But backing up another operator, regardless of the company, it's a great idea in theory. If you can do it safely, do it. So keep that in mind. Just be as safe as you can out there. Safety is the utmost important thing on the side of the road. Safety is the most important thing when you are out there hooking up and, and when you see somebody else hooking up. And that goes for motorists too. If you're, if you're driving up the road and you see emergency lights on the shoulder, I don't care what they are. I don't care if it's the Con Ed guy or the, the electric company, the PSE&G company, your, your local power or gas company or whatever. If you see lights, slow down. Give them a break. Let them work. Give them their space to work and move over. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about what some common injuries are. Um, I know we're talking about being safe, but what are the things that we can avoid um, with this training? What are the things that we can take a look at and say, these things are preventable by simply implementing a training protocol? Uh, some of the things I've become aware of recently are falls and slips. Um, some people have mentioned back injuries. Uh, what have you experienced? Dennis? I, I cannot begin to tell you how many tow operators I've met that have hurt their legs, their knees, their ankles, jumping out of a truck. They mm -hmm. go open the door and they go to jump out to the ground. Those, those, two, those two steps are there for you. Don't roll your ankle because you want to jump down. Also, stop jumping off the side of your, your, your carrier. Don't jump off the deck of your carrier either. Climb down. Use, use OSHA certified points of contact getting out of a vehicle. Just it's, it's not worth it to roll your ankle and be laid up for three weeks and not get paid because you couldn't use the steps to get out of your truck. Yeah, well, we're a strong industry. We're not invincible. You know, and <laughs> in my head, it's that one person that rolls up and they're like, welcome to the jungle. And they're just like slide, you know, like go flying out the truck and they're like, oh, I rolled my ankle. Like that is yeah. not a sexy injury and, and that's not a sexy story to tell. So, <laughs> And by operators, I mean me because I've done it too. Yeah, what's, uh, what's the worst thing that you've done to injure yourself or been injured while you're out on the road, Dennis? Thankfully, I've never had a serious injury. The worst thing I think that's ever happened is I went to go grab my wire rope and didn't have the right gloves on, and there was a frayed wire coming out of the rope, and it went right through my hand. I had to go get a tetanus shot, but thankfully, that's, that's the worst injury I've ever had. Hurt like hell, but uh, that's, that's about it. So man, yeah, I do not envy you that injury, but I'm glad your hand is back to normal. <laughs> um, so let's hop into one of our guests today, Alex, who I'm sure is no stranger to safety protocols and training his team to make sure they're safe on the road. Let's welcome Alex Chopin from ASAP Towing out of Vancouver, Washington. This is great. I love getting one of our honk providers on, one of our partner providers here. I love talking to these folks. These are the real hardworking men and women that are out there for us every day. Yeah, it's so important to just hear from them. And and really, I mean, I've known Alex for some time. I went and got a chance to go out and uh, visit him up in Vancouver. And it's definitely eye-opening um, to see how a team works so well together, especially when it comes to safety, safety protocol and uh, making sure everyone gets home safely. Cool. Let's bring Alex on. Alex, we're talking safety. We're talking training. We're talking all sorts of protocols and 
procedures and, and everything everybody does in this industry to try and keep their drivers and their equipment safe. So from what I've heard, Yvonne uh, has mentioned to you several times that uh, you, uh, you have a pretty in-depth safety training program. So as the owner of a towing company, what are you doing to ensure your operator's safety? Well, it's pretty much not what am I doing, it's what am I not doing. I look at different, different ways we can improve every single day. These are really dangerous big vehicles that they're operating. So, like, for example, if you, a driver were to lose control of one, that can cost people a lot of lives. Just because you have a truck that weighs 20,000 pounds, and even if it hits one car, it's, you know, it would be the end of it. So, obviously, I, I check driving records when drivers are first hired. There is no, they don't get to drive for at least two weeks. Two weeks, they just sit in the truck with uh, one of our lead drivers and pretty much just get the lay of the land. So um, you have a whole lead. training process that you put new oh, drivers yeah. through long before they even get behind the wheel of a truck, before they even touch the keys. They're, they're, they're learning your way of doing the business regardless of how much experience that, the, that they're coming with? Absolutely. Like at, at minimum, because we work with all the dealerships, at minimum they have to know where each drop zone is at each dealership like how to do things right, where not, what not to do, what not to be like, you know, if they're not comfortable doing something, not to do it rather than, okay, let me just try and then wreck something. Sure, yeah, I mean, sure. When I came, when I came to visit you out in Vancouver, Alex, I mean, I, you know, I hopped in the truck with you and got a chance to see just your entire operation. And, you know, I was, it was pretty impressive to me to see it. Like you guys follow a pretty strict guideline when it comes to the safety protocols and, one of the things that I, I recognize is that you have your guys across the board. Everyone has the consistent same protocols that you expect them to follow throughout a job. And then, like you said, you know, when they're onboarded, they go out and they get that first safety training when they're in the truck. Um, what are some of the things that you make sure that are instilled that they're learning when it comes to equipment? Um, well, one thing is Rex. I know that um, this is a really big the thing with no companies, um, the cost of insurance. So mm -hmm. my my one thing that I'm particularly proud of, I've never filed a claim with my insurance company, nor am I ever planning on doing it. I mean, accidents do happen, but at the same time, my drivers know that the worst thing they can do is get into an accident slash hurt somebody slash hurt mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, automatically we take preventative measures that, I make sure everybody wears something reflective. It doesn't matter if you're out of the truck on the road. It doesn't matter if it's a road where a car goes by every 20 minutes. You're still wearing your yellow vest. You're still visible. You still have all your lights on. You, ha you have to be seen and you try to do whatever job you're doing on the side of the road as quickly as possible just so you can get out of that danger zone. That's a, that's a good point you bring up, Alex. Uh, reflective clothing and gear like that. Uh, stuff like that. Where, where does that come from? Do you supply that for your employees or do, do they have their own? Is it a mix? Do, they, do you supply a, a basic version? Do employees go out and buy like if, if they want winter gear or stuff like that? I supply everything because I'm very picky about how all my drivers, I want everything uniform. So whatever, whatever it is, I will go out and I will buy a three month supply worth. So whether it's jackets, t-shirts, you name it, uh, with the whole COVID thing, I was doing it before before the whole COVID thing, but the Clorox wipes, I have a whole cabinet full of them. I have like everything has to be bought in bulk ahead of time. So there's no, there's no um, like everything's uniformed. Everything gets done immediately rather than, oh, okay, we're out of this. Let's wait a couple of days, see if we can find it or if we can find the time to go get it. When back when I was on the road, when I was in the truck, like one thing I would always keep in, in my, my, my door panel would be uh, some Clorox wipes or some Armor All wipes. Just to, if you're, you're driving and you're sitting in traffic, you find yourself waiting in a long light or you're, you're sitting in a, in a line of cars waiting to move, you, you pull out some wipes, you wipe down the inside of your truck and it just keeps it cleaner. That's something I've always been a big fan of. Yeah, you know, I've always been curious about that. You know, like when you hop into a tow truck as a consumer, you're like, you know, you're thinking about, that you know the guy pulls up and he's helping you out with the whatever the issue is with your car and then you have to hop into the bed of the truck 
Um, and I always thought like, did I wipe this down? You know, even before COVID hit, uh, and maybe I'm learning about myself that maybe I'm a little bit of a neat or germ freak or something, I don't know, but <laughs> I always wondered, so do you guys have something, like even you, Dennis, but Alex, do you guys do that consistently? It's like after every time, you know, uh, and maybe you're not having guys with any customers in the truck right now, but. So yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, I've, the like the Clorox wipes, I've been buying them from Costco. I don't know, for years, I would buy, whenever they go on sale, they have a five pack of the like huge buckets mm -hmm. and I will buy 30, 40 at a time. I literally have a cabinet in my, in my garage that's full of them. And when, when the trucks need to be restocked, I restock them. But yes, they are wiped down after every job, every piece of equipment that's touched in the truck gets wiped down. I mean like cab equipment. Um, I'm not talking like chains and stuff, but you know, we have jumper yeah. packs and everything in the cab. Yeah. Um, Let me tell then, you guys, when I hopped in the truck with Alex, I was like, this is a smooth ride. This is the cleanest tow truck I've ever been in. I almost didn't want to get out. <laughs> it was nice. But was he it actually was towing your clean. car or was this one of those situations <laughs> where you're just riding along and you weren't getting no. your car towed for a change? No, he actually towed a car. We, we hopped in. It was super like sleek and nice. We hopped in. He went. He actually had to hook up with some dollies. It was a real job. I, I hope you made her do some of the work, Alex. I hope she didn't just like ride along in the truck just to hang out. I hope you showed her how to actually. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't get the safety training, guys. <laughs> I mean, this wasn't your Jeep being towed again, right? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it wasn't. But even if it was, I would trust him to do it because of how nice he <laughs> The truck was. <laughs> You're gonna learn to leave my Jeep alone, Dennis. Absolutely not. Not until we get that thing fixed and figure out what's actually wrong with it. So, Alex, you're you're up in Washington State. You you guys are one of the hardest areas hit in the country by COVID nineteen. I know you you've been really taking this seriously. You're talking about wipes and everything else. And Yvonne's mentioned that that you you guys have uh, respirator masks as well. You've been handing those out to drivers. How do your drivers feel about that? For the most part, they're okay with it. I have a few guys that aren't particularly fans of it. So, I mean, they don't have to wear them when they're doing tows on their own, obviously, because there's, I think there's enough sanitation with the trucks. Like, they do wipe them down after every job. Um, but if they do come into contact with a customer, um, they, they are required to wear it. If there's a customer in the truck, they are required to wear it. And the customer is required to wear one. And actually, if the customer doesn't have one we have some that we provide for them so some of the recommendations that our team has been putting out for our tow providers and this this isn't just for our network this goes for anybody these are some pretty good guidelines that come from cdc guidelines and from federal mandates and things like that the first item we've suggested is always wear a mask when interacting with a customer you really should be wearing a mask when you're interacting with anybody right now i think especially in these high-risk areas your 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 operators that are out on the road they're interacting with people we got to keep them safe and by keeping them safe and keeping your customers safe i think we can we can do a lot better as an industry just to make sure that we're all keeping each other safe out here and that goes for for operators that goes for customers we were actually just sharing an article from the world wall street journal that said the cost of truck insurance premiums rose by 12 percent over the last two years and we know that the towing industry has been taking a part of that beating. We know that's just a small fraction of, of the overall trucking industry. There's this really great quote from this article that I wanted to share and maybe get your opinion on, Alex. Uh, the article went on to say, these are motor carriers that are doing their best. If you cannot demonstrate that you're obsessed with safety, you might not get renewed. So that basically saying that paying for safety is better than paying for damages or insurance premiums later on. How, how does that sound to you? How do you feel about that? Oh, I, I agree with it 100%. June is National Safety Month. Are you doing anything extra to educate your operators this month? Um, we'd love to know what your standard safety training works. In so an additional thing that we kind of added, and this, this is actually really recent, we, we pulled up on the side of the road to an actual emergency. And mm -hmm. thankfully, the driver that pulled up to that call knew CPR and pretty much saved the person's life. Wow. So now it's a requirement of the company to get a first aid CPR certification. It was an accident that happened in front of my driver. And he, he witnessed the whole thing. He turned on his emergency lights just to block the road, just, you know, to make sure the person doesn't get hurt any further. 
he got out to check how the person was doing, like just to make sure they're okay. And uh, they were having difficulty breathing or it was something of that sort, but he can see like they, they weren't okay. So he, he grabbed his lockout kit, got in, got in within seconds. At the same time, called 911 and um, ended up doing CPR on the person and got him out of the vehicle. And um, paramedics showed up and, you know, they took it from there. We actually did, didn't end up doing the tow, but, you know, who it's cares a, about the tow? Wow, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, who cares about the tow? Your driver saved a life. I mean, uh, right place, right time, right training. It, it's it's really, that's, that's a great story. Uh, it is. It's amazing. And I'm just, I'm in awe because I'm thinking, you know, how um, we think of you guys as, as heroes and first responders, um, but this is literally an instant where, not even just your safety, the standard towing safety training comes into play, but even beyond that, where you guys are there for the customer holistically. So that's, that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. Do you, because of that, do your drivers now go through CPR training or is that like just a, a one-off instance? No, now it's a, now it's a mandatory thing and I'm actually getting my certification done here in the next few weeks, but every driver now is going to be required. Wow. Wow. What other, so what other um, customer safety measures do you guys take? So you make sure the customers are always on the passenger side off the road. Like what are the best practices? So even when we first get the call, our dispatcher, it doesn't matter what the notes say from, from whichever motor club we get it. We call the customer immediately. Let first, let them know our accurate ETA. Mm -hmm. Second, find out what's really going on. If it's an emergency to where your vehicle is on the side of the freeway and cars are zooming by. Um, we'll give them instructions to like, if there's a bank, try to be out of the vehicle and up on the bank, things like that. And then obviously if, if it is a situation like that, then we escalate it and move some drivers around to get a, to get a tow truck there faster. And then when the driver does show up, the first priority is to secure the, the customer and make sure they're okay. And whether that's putting them in a truck or doing whatever they need to do, and then they can go ahead and load up the vehicle. How about for your operators, Alex? I I hear a lot more and more these days of companies just telling their drivers at all costs, unless you absolutely have no other choice to work from the passenger side of the truck so that you're off the road. Is that something you guys practice or is that just a, is that a new mindset for you? Oh, absolutely. Um, stay away, stay as far away as possible from, from the live lane of traffic. And then we also go a little bit further. We have three to six cones on each truck and if it's something that's going to take a few minutes, we'll actually cone it out. Hopefully, it, at some point, it would be something that can save one of my drivers' life. You no, know, we're we're doing our best uh, to start spreading the word about slow down, move over. Everybody is, mm -hmm. but we we can always do more. We can do more. Prov our providers can do more. Our, our our consumers, our end users, everybody just needs to be mindful. If you're listening to this, be mindful of flashing lights on the side of the road, wherever you are, whatever the lights are, whether they're amber or yellow or white or red or blue, be careful and slow down and give people an opportunity to work on the side of the road. It's dangerous. It's scary as hell to be out there. Yes. And please, oh, yeah. please understand like, you know, every six days, an operator was killed in the line of duty or that in 2019 alone lost, I think the number is 56 um, operators, correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but I think it was 56 operators, just, just for people not slowing down and moving over and understanding how dangerous it is for operators on the road. You know, we, we need everybody to join in and do their part. You know, when I found out the statistic, I was blown away and I hate even to say the statistic because it's, you know, I don't want to minimize, reduce people's lives and, and the fact that we lost lives to this, you know, but when I found out about this issue, it, it changed me forever. You know, now I see a tow truck driver and literally like I'm driving around and I, I say it in, in the car, I'm alone, but I'm like, slow down, move over because I'm reminding myself that these are people's lives that we have a responsibility to care for as, you know, as motorists. It is, it is very, very serious um, situation that we all need to be a part of. I know there, there's a lot that happens towards October where there's, you know, states and as tow associations coming up with parades and days, um, national lower days, and just really initiatives to spread the word. What are you as a company, um, as a, a tow owner, a tow company owner, 
what are you doing to help spread that message and to help your guys? Well, first of all, all my trucks say, say it's slow down, move over. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I try uh, with me personally, I just think it's all about the light strobes, like as visible as you can get, get your trucks. And I actually have, if you look at uh, my Facebook, I think there's a couple messages, like public messages from customers saying uh, that our lights are too bright. Well, they're there for a reason. Our lights are, are bright for a reason. We don't, we want to be seen. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to get killed. Every single one of my operators has a family that they return to, including me. And that's it. We just want everybody to go home to their family at the end of the day. That's, that's all we're really asking for. And I don't think that's too much to ask, which is why we have these conversations about safety and about training and all the other things that are involved with that. Lighting is a big part of it. Safety gear is a big part of it, but also just having the right equipment in front of you at your disposal, even safety, even is things like steel toe boots and, and protective gloves to make sure you're not ripping your hands open when you're dragging a wire rope out. Oh, absolutely. As far as additional safety, if we see a tow truck on the side of the road loading a vehicle, it doesn't matter which company it is. We still pull over. We turn on our lights. We pull, we pull over probably about two, three hundred feet behind them, kind of angle the truck basically to block them. And we kind of hang out there until they're done doing what they're doing and then they take off. It's two minutes out of my driver's life. But in that two minutes, you could have saved an, an, another human being's life. I love so. to hear that. Yeah, you guys, you guys are definitely doing something right over there at ASAP Towing. And I think that is just amazing to hear that you would help out another brother who's not even with your company just to make sure that they get home safe. Like, but hats off to you. That's amazing. That's the key word there, Yvonne. It's a, it's a brotherhood. They're really, unless you're involved in it, unless you're, you come from this, you don't really understand that camaraderie that goes on between operators even if you work for rival companies you want everybody to go home and yeah brotherhood or sisterhood as well yeah yeah you mentioned that. i know i <laughs> you know. know i was gonna say something i'm like and I, I you know i started brother but i was gonna say you know yeah brotherhood, but, sisterhood. but it is it's it's we we really need to be out here and be watching each other's backs we at the end of the day we all want to go home to our families and that's the most important thing so yeah, we, we know it's a familyhood. We know that they are both men and women out there, tow operators. And um, Alex, I think you said you have one female operator. Yeah, we're, we do have one female operator. She is absolutely amazing. She can do anything that the guys can. And she, she just kills it out, out in the field. She's not always driving. She does a few other things for, for the company, but she's just as good as any of the guys. And, we have yeah, no there's a lot of women in this industry who wear multiple hats, so it's good to hear. It's good to hear that you got you got someone like that a part of your team. So go, oh girl. <laughs> um, what is one thing, Alex, that you'd want to tell other ser service providers to stay safe? Probably, probably just block, block for one another. If you see a tow truck on the side of the road, it pull over, block for them because that person has a family that he's going to go to or she's going to go to at night. Give, give us a little backstory about ASAP Towing. What's, what's, what's the deal? What, who are you guys? What do you do? So I'm basically a car nut. Uh, I love doing anything and everything with cars. Um, for a while, I was an exporter dealer back in San Diego, maybe 10 years ago. And when the economy crashed for the first time, I had to do cheaper stuff, cheaper vehicles, which meant I needed them towed all the time. And I bought a tow truck just to kind of, just to kind of move my own cars around and take them to shops that work on them for me. And uh, that actually kind of formed into a business. I was just trading services. But then Yelp, Google came along and people started giving me uh, great reviews. So it turned into a business in San Diego. But unfortunately, with the amount of towing companies there and the, how big they are, I couldn't keep up. So we did a little change of pace, came to Vancouver, um, started fresh with one truck. And now it's Vancouver, going... Washington, not Canada, just to make sure everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> I get confused um, all the time. A lot, of, a lot of people actually tell Portland because we're 10 minutes away and they, the same thing, they get confused with Canada. Now we've expanded to, I think it's like 19 trucks and I, I lose count of drivers. <laughs> um, and then our, our office staff who, who are absolutely amazing. We do everything from like light duty towing to the big heavy equipment 
heavy duty trucks. We pull semis out of ditches. Like we have the big semi truck, tow trucks. So if you're in the Vancouver, Washington area and you need service, get in touch with Alex ASAP towing. You can actually find him on our honk for help website. We actually featured some of uh, his equipment there, but if you're anywhere else in the country and you need towing service, you could also go to honk for help or download the app on the Apple play store or the Google store. Well, Alex, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Uh, we really appreciate your, your insight and walking us through your safety protocols and training for your team. Okay. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on, Alex. Thank you uh, for being a guest. Thank you for joining us and stay safe out there. Oh, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me. Um, this is my first podcast. Uh, it was pretty cool. Oh, you're killing it, man. You did Absolutely. <laughs> now, speaking of PPE and gear, I want to jump into our next guest, who is Melissa from Safety for Her. How she came up with the concept, the idea, but I am really interested in in the gear that she has to offer for our ladies out there. You know, I, you know, I keep getting on you about saying um, our sisters and our brothers, of course, and of course, you know, the towing industry can typically call itself a brotherhood, and 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 so, and, and rightly so. Um, but we do have women operators out there that we we have to include in that because there are women, strong women out there all over um, towing. Um, just like the men are. And so let's bring on Melissa. I want to hear what she has to say about her, uh, about safety and what it means to the tow industry and women in the tow industry. Yeah, Melissa's doing some really cool stuff for our tow sisters out there. And even for anyone involved with with towing and roadside, this safety gear is is imperative to have. And we're going to talk about why it's important to have the right fit, have the right cut, and make sure everything is exactly what you need. And this goes for even further than the towing industry. But we're talking about uh, we're we're at a time when when women in the workplace are out uh, getting into fields where they historically haven't been before. Towing is one of them. Construction, physical labor intensive jobs and we're really starting to see a tremendous influx of women into these workplaces and products like this are necessary and there's absolutely nothing wrong with i have to say this for the ladies there is nothing wrong with doing a strong construction job and wanting to be cute while you do it okay (laughs) i have to hold out for my ladies with that so (laughs) so let's bring on melissa now and let's talk about safety for her Yes, welcome, Melissa. Thanks thank for you, thank us. you. Anytime. Yeah, we're so glad to have you on, and uh, you know, just just getting into your business and and what it means to the industry to have um, a woman take on the idea of safety. I, I want to start off by asking you where your business idea motivation came from, and and what safety means for the industry. Well, it all started um, six years ago. I met my fiance and he has been in the towing industry for over 20 years. And when I started there, I started working as a sales associate and, you know, just the little stuff. I just wanted a jacket to, you know, kind of look the part and just kind of give the whole presentation um, for the towing company. And I couldn't find anything and I kind of blew it off. It wasn't that big of a deal because I'm like, well, it's not like I'm in the field. Well, we had a couple different vendors that used to come around and sell us things. And once we got a new location and moved somewhere, I kind of took on more of the operation and employee training, you know, ride alongs. We hired some girls and I would ask them, you know, do you have a small, do you have a medium? Um, And all of them would tell me the same thing. Good luck finding that. You'll never find that. They don't make those. And I'm like, well, how is that even possible? How can that even happen? So I started researching a little bit more and I kind of heard the complaints from the women that were within our office. And, you know, I kind of feel like for myself in this generation, you know, I'm running around like crazy. I'm at work, then I'm running to the gym, then I'm running to the store and I have kids. And these women, I would see, they would just be stuck in these clothes. They were oversized. They didn't fit well, you know, and honestly, they really weren't that fashionable and comfortable either. So I decided what's the greatest thing that women love. They love leggings and I love leggings. So a lot of our girls would be in the yard and taking inventory, doing cars, doing the insurance checks in, you know, escorting people in the yard. So, Hey, let's make leggings that have the the same high vis as, you know, the male outfits. 
counterparts and let's have pockets. Let's make them, you know, so that they can put their notepad and their cell phone in there. And I wore them to a show in 2018 and people just started asking me about them. And I was like, this is really strange. <laughs> but It was also very cool because as that journey happened, you know, I came to find that there was so much more that was lacking and I wasn't the only person that noticed this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you touched on high vis clothing and obviously we're here because it's national safety awareness month. And so tell us your take, what is so important about having high vis clothing, especially in the towing industry? Well, in the towing industry, I'll just speak about that first. I mean, so you're visible. And also, you know, coming in place with visible, I mean, we have drivers that were hit. I know drivers that were hit. We all hear and see drivers that were hit and it's unfortunate. So having clothing, not only that is visible, but also that is comfortable, that fits you because there are many slips, trips and getting caught on items that, you know, come into play and people get injured. And not only do people get injured, they die. Death can happen. And on top of that, millions of dollars of insurance are also lost for companies as well. So what you mentioned about the size is actually a really interesting takeaway. In my experience, when we ordered t-shirts or anything else for drivers or any kind of equipment, we would always have to order extra large, double X, triple X, four X, five X for <laughs> drivers, for customers. And the, the, it seemed to be those were the ones we always ran out of right away with the larger mm -hmm. sizes. And then when we, we had t-shirts left over, when we had, um, uh, you know, we had jackets left over, stuff we would give out to clients and things like that. The only thing we would have left were smalls and mediums. So it's funny that, that you're- Or mediums. Sh medium, <laughs> yes. Medium. <laughs> As a woman, I'm very familiar with the term medium. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's just funny that like safety gear is almost the complete opposite of promotional gear as mm -hmm. far as sizing and, and the availability of things. And, you know, I think that the biggest thing, like with myself, you know, I, I'm a woman, we know, you know, it's a scientific proven fact, women are shaped and made different than men. Um, but also, you know, we do come in different. And what I ran into in the industry is I'm very short, but I also have hips. So if I want a small, um, well, the small's not fitting over my hips. So now I need a medium. Well, now the medium's hanging because now there's nothing that's catching it in the areas or conforming it to my body. So now when I walk past something, I can get caught and get ripped backwards. So I think that's the part that I started to realize that, you know, even with pants, okay, now I have pants on, but now I have a whole nother half a foot dragging down because I'm short. Sure. You get out, you step in a puddle. Now all of a sudden yeah. all that extra is all, all soaked and that's crawling up your leg. Your socks are wet, your boots are wet, your whole day's ruined. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are the most important features when it comes to high vis gear, just generally, uh, you know, even not just with your stuff? Mm -hmm. In general, I mean, I mean, one of the biggest things is having to be comfortable. It's such, I mean, even with safety, I think a lot of people don't think about the psychological effects that clothing has on you. Um, just like as anybody knows, if you're dressed up, you know, you feel good about yourself. If you're wearing something that you're comfortable in, your confidence is higher. So I think comfortability and fit is so important for anybody across the board. It just, you know, it, it brings up the whole, you know, happier aura inside of someone. Yeah. What do you think is the most, um, what features are the most important? Color, reflection, pattern? Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's guidelines to clothing. So, I mean, you know, we have to have a certain amount of reflective and a certain amount of high vis, but I mean, I think that it can depend on your job and how, you know, it's different when you're on the freeway versus if you're just a crossing guard, you know, or somebody else. But I think, you know, the yellow high vis is very, very good. Um, I think it's very eye catching. The orange is too, but I mean, it, it depends on how the reflective goes around the body really makes a difference and how, how easily seen it is. For my leggings, I have a higher grade reflective on them so that it can be seen at a further distance versus, you know, there are certain reflectives that could crack or could fade. Is there any difference between gear for at night, gear for during the day. Obviously, we all want to be out there and, and be mm -hmm. visible and be seen as much as possible. But are there things that people maybe don't know about uh, as far as things like patterns and stuff like you just mentioned that 
would maybe be interesting to the, the average person to know and have that knowledge in their pocket when they go to purchase safety gear? I mean, I think they need to just be aware of are, there, are they on the roadway or are they on the highway? What do they do? I mean, class two is a different story. That's normally, it's a general, very across the board class that everybody wears that kind of covers you um, roadway wise. Now you're getting into class three when you get into obviously faster speeds. But I think that class two across the board is definitely something that everybody should ask for um, as far as, you know, vests or shirts. Um, it gives you enough even ground of reflective and high vis material. No, Melissa, a lot of people don't know, or maybe maybe they do, they'll do some research, but um, I know you mentioned that your fiance, that's how you got into the industry, is your fiance is in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, do you all do any personal safety training with your employees, with your operators um, that you guys have implemented specifically? Well, I mean, like we have the TIM training here in our state, so we like have our drivers go to that. Um, we also have you know, we, we talk to them about like accident scenes, how to position your truck. If you have to pick up a vehicle at an accident in your truck, you know, it should be visible so that people can see you and are aware where you are. Having safety cones, you know, there, if, if there happens to be police there, you know, asking for their help to direct traffic, you know, having proper attire on, you know, making sure that you do have your safety vest with you. Say if you just had a t-shirt on and now you're at an accident, you need to put your vest on so everyone can see you. I mean, the biggest thing, especially with highway is just being aware, constantly looking back. You know, unfortunately, that's how a lot of these drivers are killed. We just had a driver killed two weeks ago here mm -hmm. within our state. Oh you know, God, I, I mean, yeah. it. it's just, it's just the biggest thing is just be aware, be overly aware, you know, and if yeah. you don't feel comfortable, call dispatch, let us know why you're not comfortable. You yeah. know, nothing's worth, you know, worth losing your life. If you need backup, if you need help, whatever it may be. I mean, that's the biggest thing is the communication with dispatch. I mean, if it is a pack freeway and you just can't and there's no way for you to move, ask for another truck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I read an article and it really touched on some data from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And they stated that 191 motor vehicle um, uh, operators were killed between 2011 and 2016, which resulted in an annual rate of 42.9 deaths per 100,000 um, mm -hmm. workers, which to me is like 42.9%, if we can wrap our brain around that, mm -hmm. is an astronomical number and it has to change. Um, what are you guys specifically doing? I know you touched on making sure that you guys know, hey, reach out to dispatch, let them know. Is there anything mm -hmm. that you guys are doing outside of just your company train safety training, anything you guys are doing to join the slow down, move over movement um, and to advocate for move over laws? Um, what are you guys specifically doing? I mean, we know a couple of people in our state, you know, we kind of all have our own little thing that we do. Um, just like when the driver was, you know, killed the other uh, two weeks ago, unfortunately, you know, we all band together. We, you know, honor that driver. I always, you know, try to push as much as I can, you know, with not only towing, you know, our, our officers, our EMTs, our construction workers, slow, just give them some room. Like it, you do not need to fly past somebody, just stop and pause 10 seconds could save a life. I just think that it, people aren't aware of like how quick it can just happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I had no idea there was such thing as a move over law Mm -hmm. until, you know, I came to Hawk and I started looking at some of the hazards on the road and I'm just like, I'm, you know, just blown away. And so, you know, and I'm just one person, but we've got to figure out a way to come together and really help other consume other motorists understand that are outside of the tow industry, you know, what's going on. So how about other safety gear outside of the stuff that you're selling? What else does your team use? What else are you... Uh, any any cool stuff that you guys lean on? Any any particular lines or, or? I saw a pretty cool product launch the other day. What was that? I saw that uh, Safety for Her had some new gloves released. Yes, Ooh. did release gloves <laughs> for women. It was great. I I've been asked about this for so long, and I worked on it, and I wanted to kind of do something that was 
functionable on kind of like both ends, even for like, you know, lifting and as well as, you know, outside vehicles with the grip and your fingers. So um, one of the complaints is the gloves were just, they would never fit there. You know, I had the same thing. There was only a medium and a medium is like a large. So um, they never fit. So we actually carry extra small gloves and small as well. And we also carry the medium large as well, but um, they're really nice. Um, you know, we try to make them a little bit more fashionable, but also, you know, they're impact resistant, they're A2 cut resistant, and, you know, you can wash them and use sanitizer on them, which, one, which was one of the biggest things I asked right now with all of the sanitizing we're doing. So, so far, you know, they've kind of been a hit and I'm very excited about it because I know it was really a demand that was asked for. No, that's so cool. And I, I like that you mentioned the, the sanitizer option because especially with COVID going around. Can, can we just talk about people with allergies for a second, though? I, I'm so <laughs> afraid to sneeze. You know what? I was going to include you guys, too. If you have allergies, stay home. Okay. We don't have time for the Rona, if, if or not. You know, we don't I'm going to I'm gonna tell you, we were sitting downstairs the other day, and my fiance has the worst allergies right now. <laughs> And he sneezed like five times and me and one of my daughters, we looked at him like, excuse me, you can't be in this house anymore. Like, you gotta go. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I get the same thing. It's like, I'm not sick. It's just pollen, yes. please. Yes. Yeah. I know. So really fast, Melissa, just on a, uh, I just want to know one thing that you'd want to tell our audience about safety in general, just maybe a few words of wisdom. I think it, it's really talk to your, you know, employees, ask them what they need. But, you know, one of the things with women in particular was the emotional damage it did because they felt like they weren't comfortable enough to ask for certain sizes or certain things that they needed because they were already underestimated as a woman. And now they're already fighting twice as hard to try to fit in with the group. So now they're asking for, let's say, exceptions. And I mean, it's for anyone, even men that are smaller too. I mean, that's a different thing. I think it's communicate, you know, with, with just like our drivers. Are you okay? You got, you got everything? You need anything? Is everything going well? I mean, it means the world to somebody as well to take two, three minutes out of your day and just ask them if they're good, if they need something, especially in how crazy the world is right now. Mm-hmm. It, it, it changes the morale and they kind of feel even as an employee of you, you know, sometimes, like I say, you have to kind of go out of your way and, you know, give a little bit extra to understand, you know, we, like our drivers, they drive us crazy and I'm sure we drive them crazy, but, you know, we love them. We're like a family, you know, and I mean, and we want to keep like them safe. Yeah, like uh, we're, we're, we call ourselves the dysfunctional family. And I think everyone in the towing industry could probably agree with that. 100%. Um, you know, you we're screaming at you through the dispatch thing of why you're late. And then 10 minutes later, we're laughing about something else. But, you know, we all got to get on with our day here. It's mm-hmm. tough love, I mean, kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Melissa, we've had you on, and we just thank you so much for joining us today. And I want to give you just one more opportunity to tell us where our listeners can find you, where they can purchase Safety for Her gear. Um, You can find us at at our website, www.safetyforher.com. Also, we're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. All the same thing, safety, the number four in her. Right now, we're doing free shipping. We just launched our gloves. Um, I would love for everybody to go on there, take a look, see see if you have any women drivers that may need them. You know, I, I appreciate, you know, the support of the industry. You know, it gets rough some days, but, you know, the amount of men and women that have supported my mission and just, you know, what the company stands for has been, like, truly amazing. Yeah, we're, we're at a really cool time where there, there's this, there's a driver shortage nationwide in every driver mm-hmm. industry, and we know that. And to have women enter this industry in a different fashion is really cool. It's, it's a really great time to be here. And women have always been an integral part of this business. Um, my experience, they've always been the brains of the operation, but it's nice <laughs> to see them out on the road in the truck and, and getting dirty. Yeah, just, Say it uh, again, Dennis. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> For the people in the back who do not yes. know. <laughs> <laughs>
No, and, it, it, and you know, and that's the thing. And I think people get a misconception right away when they hear like leggings, like, oh, it's so, but I, I think if people really understood what my point is, you know, my point is to empower women, you know, have a clothing where they can walk into any store they want and they have the same selection and they have the things to wear to make them not only safe, but also comfortable as well. We have girls and if they wanted to be a tow truck driver, a construction worker, or whatever that may be, you know, I just want them to have the same availability as anybody else has had. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. So Melissa, I understand you have a special offer for our listeners. You want to tell us about that? Yes. So for the celebration of safety month, we will have 10% off for any of the listeners that use the code honk honk on our website. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And also it includes the free shipping as we're already running too. So it's a double deal. 10% off and free shipping code honk honk safety for her.com. That's the number four, right? Yes. Yes. Guys go out and get your gear. Awesome. Go out and get your stuff while it's, while it's, while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. Get it before it runs out. Get it before mm-hmm. the toe shows are back up and, and Melissa's got a, a wall of stuff for sale in, in Florida or wherever we end up. Yes, I've seen the review, so you don't want to miss out. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. Well, that was such a great conversation. Great episode, Dennis. My takeaway today is you can never be overprepared to help your team be as safe as possible during a job. And we all know the benefits of safety. Safe operators get jobs done quickly. They get things done the right way. If your operators are being safe and they're not getting hurt, there's less downtime. Your equipment isn't down as much if you're taking care of it. If you're taking care of your people, they're not down as much. And your insurance costs go down too. It's a big thing. We know insurance is outrageous in this industry and across the trucking sector right now. And we know that having a great safety record is going to put you in a better position when it's time to renegotiate those insurance rates. And hey, don't be afraid to help out someone else when you're on the road. It may not be your job. It may not be someone that you're familiar with, but just a little kindness, taking a little time to help out another brother or sister in the industry can go a long way and save a life. This really is a family industry. And even if you don't like the guy down the road, you still want to make sure he goes home to his family. We encourage you and your team to have a safety meeting. Talk about common workplace injuries and ways that they can prevent injuries on the job. 10 minutes of having that conversation right now could save you tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands down the road. The last thing you want is one of your operators to get hurt or, or God forbid, killed and having a piece of equipment destroyed and having your insurance premiums go up or, or even, even losing your insurance because of something that could have been prevented. Yeah. And guys, don't be afraid to take advantage of the offers. If you're listening to this podcast, take advantage of the offers that we have for you, that our, that our guests have brought on for you, um, specifically because you're listening to this podcast. Yeah, we really want to thank our guests again for, for bringing us all these, these great tips and these great tricks and having this wonderful conversation. And please go, go check out safety for her and, uh, Follow Alex's page. Uh, We could share that on our socials as well. Hey, Dennis, one last thing. Now, we talked a lot about COVID-19 and how operators are cleaning their trucks all the time. Now, I don't know if you have, but I've been hearing that operators have been using sanitizing wipes and other harsh chemicals to clean their trucks, and it started to discolor their dashboards and seats. We found a solution for that a new product from a company called Spiffy. They are the leading provider of mobile vehicle disinfection services, and they just launched an e-commerce website to distribute disinfection products. Now, give me a minute. I want to read the description for our listeners because this stuff is amazing, guys. Spiffy's EPA-approved hospital-grade disinfectant spray cleans 99.999% of bacteria, germs, and even COVID-19 from the entire interior of tow trucks and provides a seven-day layer of protection after being used. Now, Dennis, several Hawk partners recently tested this product out, and the feedback is they love it. It's very affordable, too. A 32-ounce bottle comes with two microfiber towels and can be used on 10 to 12 trucks. Honk has negotiated the best pricing out there for our listeners. I suggest giving it a try. We have a discount code for you. You can find them at www.spiffydisinfectionstore.com. And here's the promo code, Safety. 
That's H-O-N-K-S-A-F-E-T-Y. <laughs>